One of the greatest sins a believer can commit is the sin of prayerlessness. And you see, many have not realized how serious prayerlessness is. Prayerlessness is dangerous because it reveals five things. Number one, prayerlessness reveals number one that you are in sin. Hear me? You don't need to fornicate before you start sin, being sinful. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 12, the verse 23, Samuel said, As for me, I will not, God forbid, that I sin against God in ceasing to pray for you. So from there we deduce that prayerlessness is sin. And note this, prayerlessness is the first sin you commit before other sins follow. I can tell you an authority that many Christians who are falling into addictions began by stopping prayer. You started beating your wife when you stopped praying. Because you will never beat your wife if you constantly appear before the presence of God. The Holy Ghost will say something to you. I'm telling you. So, when you neglect fellowship with God, this is when breakages, distraction begin to flourish in your life. I'll give you an example. I was in a prayer camp doing a fasting and prayer and I had a Bluetooth headset on my ears. And while I was using a Bluetooth headset, I had the phone because the, the Bluetooth headset was, was being played from my phone. So I put the phone on the bench and then I began to move further away from the phone whilst the headset was in my ears. Whilst I was moving further away, I began to hear breakages in the song that was playing. And as I kept moving further away from the phone, I heard disconnected. And as I went further, I had switched off. I quickly turned it on, came closer, and I had connected, and the song started playing. And God said, this is the devotional and prayer life. Hear me? You are that Bluetooth headset. And that phone is God. The Bluetooth headset is useless if the phone is not playing. So anything the Bluetooth headset is reflecting is coming from the phone. Listen, anything playing in your life is coming from God. The moment you begin to disconnect from God, there will be breakages, there will be disconnection, and they will be switched off. And many of you now have switched off your spiritual life and yet you're expecting miracles. Tell someone, get connected. One more time, get connected. So prayerlessness reveals number one sin. Hear me. Most of you here need to apologize to the Holy Spirit for the sin of prayerlessness. These are sins that are called respectable sins. We don't book them. We don't really see its re relevance. So the first thing is what? The, the first thing pray prayerlessness reveals is what? Sin. Number two is rebellion. Hear me. To not pray as a child of God is rebelling the protocol, the systems, and the structures God has put in place to help you. So hear me. A prayerless Christian is a rebel. And the last time I checked the book of 1st Samuel chapter 15, from the verse 23, the Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Oh, that tells me that a prayerlessness, a prayerless believer will open a door for witchcraft activities in his life. You are a no match for witches when you are prayerless. Because there's no fire in your life. The third thing prayerlessness reveals is pride. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. That means creature's highest expression of humility is not kneeling. Is praying. So, God first sees a humble man by seeing a praying man. You know why? Because a praying man says, the Lord, I can't, but you can. Anytime you are prayerless, you tell God, I can handle life. I'm in charge. I don't need you. I can, I can do it. I'm fine, God. Stay in heaven. That's what you say to God. 
And the last time I checked in the book of Psalm 34, the verse 6, the Bible says, this poor man cried. And the Lord hit him. I was doing a calculation. Now, the one who said this was David. Question, was David poor? David was a king. He was very rich. Yet, when he came to prayer, he said, this poor man cried. What David is saying is that he used the figurative understanding of poverty to explain prayer. Only poor men pray. I explain again. Have you realized that poor men survive by asking? Poor men live by depending on others for their survival. David is also saying that as far as my relationship with God is, when I come to him, I come bankrupt to receive. I don't have wisdom. You have the wisdom. I'm, I'm bankrupt. I came for wisdom. Until you are poor before God, spiritually, you can't receive from God. That is why prayerlessness is the highest level of pride. And number four, our prayerlessness reveals disobedience. This is a serious matter here. The Bible several times commands us to pray. First Thessalonians 5, 17. Pray without ceasing. Colossians 4, 2. Continue in prayer. Romans 12, 12. Be instant in prayer. Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. First Peter 4, 7. By the end of all things is near. Be sober. Be vigilant. And give yourself to prayer. Which means prayer is commanded. To not pray is to live in disobedience. And the Bible says that to obey is better than sacrifice. You know what it means? No amount of offering can make up for prayerlessness. Oh, uh, you, you can't say, okay, Lord, I've not been able to pray, but here's my offering. Listen. We need to understand that, listen, prayerlessness is complete disobedience. I'm telling you. And finally, prayerlessness reveals our unbelief. <laughs> Hebrews chapter six, chapter 11, verse 6. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, to know this in scripture and not pray is to say you don't believe in God. So prayerlessness is a revelation of our unbelief. We don't believe God. We don't trust God. That is why we don't pray. Because if you truly know that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, you will seek him by prayer. I'm telling you. You are too sufficient. That's why you don't pray. You are too full. That's why you don't pray. You are too rich. That's why you don't pray. And that is undoing. I have, I have some news for you. If you don't pray as a child of God, God will not trust you. And if God does not trust you, he will not entrust you. And hear me. If you don't pray, Satan loves you. I will explain. If you check this category, sin, Satan sins. Number two, Satan is a rebel. Number three, Satan is a proudful being. Number four, Satan is disobedient. Number five, Satan lives in unbelief. That's why he sinned against God. So hear me. Satan loves you when you don't pray. You know why? Because you are a reflection of who he is. Yeah. 